I started making some of the repairs on the blocks and I don't know if you can tell with me just panning through it if it is glaringly obvious which ones are the ones that are repaired or not. This one's in progress. But this is the one, this is one of the ones that was repaired. And that's the square. And that's the other one. And then moving over to the other side on this block. This is the one that I've repaired. Anyway, I decided that I was going to, um, I wanted to take this blue binding off and I was going to do all four sides and then I, I quit. Wasn't sure that's what I wanted to do. Um, but I don't know if you can see here, they're this block was intact and I pulled on it just gently and it tore a hole in it. So I'm thinking that where the stitching was on this blue on this blue binding that the integrity of the fabric just isn't of course it's not what it was when it was new but um, so I'm thinking what I'm going to do now is take the rotary cutter and cut um, there and then sew in a new binding in a quarter of an inch in or a half an inch in. It will mean that the squares won't be square but that's okay. I should go ahead and cut the binding off. This is just um, tearing apart on its own or it will get caught on something and rip. Gives me a heart attack every time I hear that fabric tearing. When I filmed part one of restoring an almost 70 year old quilt almost a year ago, I fully expected to be done with it by now, a year later, or at least halfway done. One of my concerns was the strength and integrity of the fabric and if it could hold up to the hand sewing that I was going to do on it. I ran into a few challenges. I got frustrated, overwhelmed, and discouraged, and so I put it up and didn't take it out until just recently. If you'd like to watch the first video, I'll leave a link in the description box. After getting it out and looking at it once again, I've decided to move forward 
and just see what happens. It's been folded, so those got a little ruffled, but those were going to replace that fabric. As it turned out, I grossly underestimated the amount of work that would go into restoring a quilt and overestimated my skill as a seamstress. But having said all that, I'll show you what I'm presently working on and the results. I should probably start out by saying that if you don't love hand sewing, you probably shouldn't start a project like this, at least not the way I attacked it. I'm sure there's other ways of doing it, though. This method is just what I came up with and what made sense to me. I found these pieces that I had cut and that were left over from a previous project. So I'm just going through them. They're a little bit larger than what I need, but I'm just going through them to see um, what patterns look good that I can use. Right here, I'm cutting some strips of fabric to make a nine patch block. There were some blocks on the quilt where every square was ruined. So for those, I just made a completely new block. This set is just going to be a partial nine patch. For the most part, I did three inch by three inch squares but the sizes varied so greatly that I found that I needed to measure each square. For this block here, there were three squares in a row that needed to be repaired. So I just made a short strip set for that. I'm gonna do two and a half because that looks like that'll fit a two and a half. Okay, and then I'll just go ahead and fold this over and iron it so that when I, it'll be easier when I go ahead and sew it on. And then for this block, I made a full block since all of the squares needed to be replaced.
make a note that if you have an antique quilt that's worth a lot of money and is very old, you may want to look into having it professionally restored so to not lose any of its value. I am not a professional restorer and my sewing skills are at beginner level at best, but I wanted to be able to fix this quilt that's been in my family for a long time so that I could put it out and enjoy it and see it every day. These are the blocks that I have attached already. This gold and brown and kind of pinkish color. That was a whole block. And then the three squares on that block, the yellow and the green, a whole block with the brown and the white and the dark blue. So as you can see, I've done repairs to almost every single block on the first row and about three on the second row so far. using a disappearing ink marking pen to mark an X on each square so that I can hand quilt it. The ink disappears in a couple of days when exposed to air. ahead and quilted a few of the squares one night so you could see how it looked. I did it without a embroidery hoop because I didn't want to put any more stress on the old fabric than I needed to. I used the same color aqua thread to quilt the top. I'm going to go ahead and close out the video now. I've got a lot more work to do on this and I'll probably be posting a few more videos. So in the meantime, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!